Hello and welcome to the More Confidence with Luna Gaia podcast. I am your host, Lenaria Gaia, and here we talk all things body image, self-esteem, your thinking in your mind, how do you connect true to you in every part of who you are. I want you to know that all of you is welcome, so sit back and relax and listen to today's episode. Sending you love. Here's what they don't tell you about the pitfalls of self-confidence. What it's all about to actually love yourself. There are some, yeah, there are some things that happen when it comes to our confidence that aren't exactly the most wonderful. And on today's episode of the podcast, I'm going to talk to you about them so that you can be fully prepared. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of the More Confidence with Luna Gaia podcast. I am your host, Luna Gaia, and this is episode 149. What they don't tell you about self-love, the most common pitfalls that you can ever experience along this journey. Because it's not all about love and light, let's face it. Before we get started in today's episode, I just want to say, if you are new to the podcast, first of all, welcome. It is absolutely wonderful to have you here. This podcast is all about teaching you how to fall madly, deeply, wonderfully in love with yourself. Now, sometimes that might sound like a little bit of love and light, like I just mentioned, but this podcast is about the real. It's about the raw and it's about the true. It's about being able to you to let go of your insecurities, let go of your self-doubt, let go of your fears that are holding you back so you can just get on with being your most authentic and true self. Who wants some of that? I bet it's you. And if it is you, then you've come to the exact right place. I used to hate myself for a very long time. I had a very good bravado. I always had I wore a very, very strong mask and I was very, very good at pretending that I was okay, pretending that I was confident, pretending that I was self-assured, but on the inside I wasn't at all. And over the last 13 years of my career and the last 20 years for myself, I have learned about mindset. I've learned about getting out of my own way. I've learned about becoming my most confident, authentic self through lived experience, through my coaching experience, through many different modalities. And this podcast is my gift to you to be able to help you on your way to becoming all of those things for yourself. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to teach as many women and girls, maybe even, you know, bros and others as well, to fall madly deeply in love with yourself so you can get out of your own way. I want to revolutionize the way that you see yourself and your body so that you can get on with living your true heart's desires. I honestly believe that there is unique talents and gifts that you have that you are hiding from right now. Perhaps they have come to life a little bit in your world. Perhaps they haven't. And if they haven't, and even if they have a little, I want them to expand. I want them to start to come to life so you can get out of your own way. And that's what today's episode is all about. I'm here to talk to you in today's episode about what they don't tell you. You know, we can kind of see on Instagram, the Instagrammable kind of quotes of like, good vibes only. And a picture gets painted, doesn't it? You see this on social media all the time. You'll see curated images, videos that are perfectly produced, and you'll see these usually women kind of in amazing places around the world going, live your dreams. It's possible. Just go after it. And they're, they're, they're in, in a bikini on the beach and they're tanned. They're probably likely to be fairly thin. They're usually white. And we have this kind of ideology that's going on. They're on the beach. They're, they're having, you know, a cocktail in their hand and they're talking about all the reasons why you ought to just have good vibes only and go after your dreams. And that can feel a little bit motivational, you know? It can feel, and, and I post things like that from time to time in the moments whereby I am in those places. But what happens when we only see those kind of images? When we only have that kind of content coming through, what ends up happening is that we fool ourselves. We are blinded into believing that other people's lives are all sunshine and rainbows the whole time. 
And so we think the fairy tale is true. And then what happens when we realise that we are the Cinderella in the story, but, you know, before the glass slipper comes along? What happens then? What happens when we then realise that we are not able to live up <clears throat> to this fairy tale? We get disappointed in ourselves. We think that we have failed. We think that we're not trying hard enough, that maybe that we are not enough. Maybe if we just changed ourselves a little bit more, if we changed our appearance, if we changed who we were dating, if we changed yeah, who we're in relationship with or our job or if we got more money, it is a perpetuating system that says that you need to be someone different, you need to look different, you need to have different things in order to be your most confident self. I don't prescribe to toxic positivity. I don't prescribe to good vibes only because I know what happens when we do. I am really about the real and the raw and the true of our lives because it's not always sunshines and freaking rainbows. It's real life. And in our real life world, we have bills to pay and we might have mouths to feed. At the very least, we have our own. We have circumstances and complex family dynamics and we have emotions and we have thoughts. And yes, it's really good to have a look at it. Oh my God, I'm going to go towards this image of perfection in order for you to feel better about yourself. But the only thing that happens when we are surrounded by that kind of content all the time, exclusively, all that happens is that we feel worse about ourselves because we can't live up to that. But it's an impossible standard. It's not real. It's not true. Each and every single person has their own battles. Each and every single person is living a life that is complex and diverse. I really want you to understand this, that whatever you're seeing on social media or in the media, even if you follow my content in the form of this podcast or you follow me on social media, understand that all you're seeing is a portion of the life because it's not particularly interesting you watching me clean my house. It's not particularly in, particularly interesting to watch you to watch me as I rearrange my office to be able to come and deliver a podcast today. Even with my content that is real and raw and true and you'll often see me first thing out of bed, last thing before I go, you'll see me in the gym, you'll see me sweaty, you will see me in all different sorts. I even post when I'm having an allergic breakout, lying on the couch needing to sleep. I'll post those things, even if you don't find them very interesting. And the reason I post those things is because I want people to see that there are more than one side of these, quote, influences. We're all living a real life. And if you only ever see me happy or a deliberate, quote, vulnerable share on social media, you're not seeing that there is real life happening and that diminishes your possibility of being your most confident, wonderful, incredible self. And I want you to be your most confident, wonderful, incredible self. Seeing altered images, altered videos, or curated at the very least, where it's only being shown the, quote, the good side, or, again, that purposeful, deliberate, curated, vulnerable self still lit properly, still curated, still polished in some way, shape or form. It's creating a false and harmful messaging to what you're experiencing. This is one of the pitfalls. I'm going to get to them in a moment. There's three most common pitfalls that we experience when it comes to our confidence and self-love. And this is really one of them. The problem with when we're looking at social media or, or the media one dimensionally is that it actually dehumanizes us. It dehumanizes the person that is delivering it. I see it all the time. If I have a, a reel or a short that goes up and 
it gets a lot of attention on social media, people will comment on the video in the third person. They will say, like, I'm talking on the video, and they will say, she needs to lose weight or she's ugly or it's and they're usually not very nice comments in in when 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 they're talking like this they'll say something like she instead of talking to me they will say she as if i'm not the creator of the content as if i'm not going to read as if i'm not there she as if i'm some kind of fictional character rather than saying you are ugly or you are fat or you are awful or you are annoying they'll say she is annoying. And notice what happens there. There's a dehumanization of that. Do you do this for yourself? Do you dehumanize the people in your life? Even idolize them. That's dehumanizing. Oh, my God, she's so amazing. Yeah, and obviously if you're talking directly to someone, you're not going to say she's amazing. But do you do this? Do you idolize people? You know, Lizzo has been in the news lately. She's been in the news because some of her dancers and the people that work for her are saying that she's not as golden as what they thought she would, that it's created an environment of, of harm. Now, I don't know the truth. I don't know where that's at. But we see this a lot. Ellen was in the news around this a while back, that she spreads kindness, but she's actually a real hard ass and she makes people feel uncomfortable. It's really interesting because when we expect someone to be a certain way and then all of a sudden they hold boundaries or they step outside of their character that is, oh, my God, Lizzo is just always so positive or Ellen, she's just a bright ray of sunshine. When she's got millions and tens of millions, hundreds of millions of viewers and hundreds of millions of dollars on the line and she's got a job to do plus all her pressures in her life. I'm not making excuses for anyone's behavior here. I'm suggesting that we start opening up our perspective of people, including ourselves. Because when we just see someone one dimensionally and go, oh my God, they're amazing, we're going to get a rude shock when we realize that they're human. <laughs> We've did that with our parents, right? Our parents, ah, as a child, maybe that they're the, the be all and end all. They are incredible creatures when we're really young. And as we grow up, we start to see that maybe they're not as perfect as we thought they were. That unraveling can be really quite scary. And I encourage you to do that with everybody. See everyone as human, which means that they are multifaceted. And then you're not going to move into the pitfall of thinking that everything needs to be freaking sunshine and, power and, and roses. It paints a picture that to be our most confident, authentic self means that we are always happy and that life always goes our way. It's a fantasy world. And one that I'm just not here for at all, it actually blocks the pathway to your power. In order to reclaim your power and become the most confident, authentic version that you want to be, it actually takes guts. It actually takes courage. And it actually takes you facing the parts of you that you need to. It takes you getting in the arena of life and doing some hard work. You're going to get punched around. You're going to get slapped about in this thing called life, particularly on the journey of self-love and awakening. As you move into higher levels of consciousness or higher levels of self-love, high, high levels of confidence, you're going to come up against darkness in you that you need to face. If you want to move on to the next level, I think the butterfly example is the most beautiful way to describe this. People often use that, you know, the caterpillar becomes the butterfly. Oh, it's magical, isn't it? Isn't it magical that this little, like, creepy skeleton worm thing cruises along, it goes to sleep for a little while and poof, becomes a butterfly. Oh, magic. Yeah. You know what they fail to talk about in that metaphor? Is the fact that the caterpillar literally cocoons itself, literally puts itself in its own tomb, goes in, like, builds a complete coffin for itself for it to die in. 
And that's what happens. The caterpillar dissolves itself quite literally. It turns into goo and mush inside of that cocoon and then it rebuilds itself within the darkness. It completely like, has to form all the other bits again now. It forms all of the things. So not only does, well, was it a caterpillar, it then has to disintegrate all of who it used to be as the caterpillar and then bit by bit rebuild itself to become the butterfly. And we think, oh, okay, well, that's, that's kind of changed the metaphor a little bit. That's already a little bit gnarly, right? That's pretty crazy to think that that's what has to happen. But then what? Now it has to break out of the self-made coffin that it made for itself. It has literally gone through a massive transformation, hard, in the dark, crumbling to nothing before it rebuilds itself, and now it has to fight its way out of its old skin. Holy smokes. Are you starting to get a bit of an idea of this bit that we skim over when it comes to like, oh, my God, everything's amazing, love and light, wow. And then if that butterfly has been able to break itself out of the cocoon, we might want to rescue it. We might want to see that cocoon, the butterfly, and see it struggling. So we're going to get a pair of scissors and gently open that cocoon. If we gently open that cocoon for that butterfly, it will not be strong enough to survive on the outside. It's the crumbling of the caterpillar, the dying of the caterpillar, the moving to goo, the rebuilding of the butterfly, and then the breaking out that makes the butterfly's wings and self strong enough to survive. And get this, when that butterfly finally does get strong enough, to move out of its self-made prison to which it died in, it can't fly yet. Its wings are wet. It needs to vulnerably stand out there with its big, beautiful, amazing new wings and let the sun dry it. Open to vulnerability, open to predators, open to anything that might want to kill it because it can't get away just yet, because its wings haven't dried yet. Then, finally, if it's made it through all of that, then it will fly. So my friends listening to this podcast, watching us on YouTube, my gosh, I want you to know that this journey of self-love may very well require you to go into a cocoon and rebuild yourself, that the old self will need to be denied, to let go of, to transmuted, that you will use all the bits of your old self to create your new self and then you will break beyond it and, and then you'll be out in the world with new wings, feeling a little bit uncomfortable and vulnerable. Then you can fly. I'm trusting that this metaphor the extended metaphor of this, the truth of this metaphor, shows you that what on social media we see is that just the, 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 the montage of the caterpillar to the butterfly, and it's wonderful. But what we don't see is the depth that that caterpillar had to go into in order for it to fly. So pitfall number one on this path to self-love is that you think that it's not meant to be hard and get messy. So you resist the dark times. How often do you do this? You think, oh, well, you know, it's not meant to be that way. I'm seeing Luna or I'm seeing other people. I'm seeing people on social media and they don't seem to be in the pits of hell with this. It's because they're not showing you it. <laughs> that's all that's happening. They're not showing you that the transformation can take darkness. It doesn't mean that it has to be painful all the time. It doesn't mean that it has to be messy and hard all the time. Not all the time, but showing you that it will be messy and hard at times. And the more that you deny this very fact, the more that you resist the fact that when you're in the darkness, that that is your transformation, the more that you resist that, oh, my goodness gracious me, the harder the journey is actually going to be. 
because you keep thinking it's meant to be sunshine and rainbows all the time, and it's not. So I encourage you with this first pitfall, this pitfall that suggests that it's not meant to be hard and messy at times. Realise that it will be. Realise that that's part of the part of the journey. That if you're in the thick of it, if you're in like the mess of it, then that's part of the deal. I also, just as a side note, want you to understand that that every new version of yourself will require you to face old parts of yourself. It'll be a new transformation, a new caterpillar into a butterfly. And you will do that many, many, many times on this journey. I don't, I don't believe that we ever get to a point where we're done. Well, in some ways, our last breath, the very last breath that we take here is when the masterpiece of your life has completed. That's when it's done. So the work, I want you to understand that as well, that although you might be going through a dark period right now, understand that there is light on the other side of that, yay, and that as you up-level and as you continue to grow, there's going to be other periods of darkness. And that you don't need to be afraid of the darkness so much. Because on the other side of the darkness, if you keep work walking, you will get to the light. And we've all heard that term before. If you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> yeah, just keep going through hell, keep walking. And I don't mean to minimize anyone who's been in a dark hole for a very long time. Just on a side note there, that there is a big difference between I'm in the hole, I'm doing the messy work and I'm confronting the parts of me that I need to be confronting right now to do the work compared to I'm going to cocoon myself with no intention of getting out, with no intention of doing the work. It's like the first step of becoming the butterfly is to cocoon yourself. And a lot of people get stuck in the cocoon. In fact, that's the second pitfall, right? I'm going to add a bonus. It's a second pitfall. 1A, if we can go that, 1.1, that a lot of people will cocoon themselves with no intention of getting out and they get stuck in the cocoon. If you are stuck in the cocoon right now, if you are in the darkness and you've been there for a particularly long time and you have no idea how to get out of that, Start looking around you in the darkness. What needs to be brought to your attention? What needs to be loved? Because in that dark, the way that we move through the darkness is to bring light to the dark. And when we say bring light, we say we, we say it in our language all the time. We'll bring something to light. Yeah? Let's shine a light on it. What's in the darkness? What is the mess that you're not paying attention to now? What parts of you do you need to face that may be really uncomfortable because putting yourself in the cocoon is not doing the work. Putting yourself in the cocoon is the beginning of doing the work. And if you stay there and you're stuck there and you feel sorry for yourself a lot and you are holding yourself back and you are telling your story a lot, well, I can't get out of the cocoon because of X, Y, Z. We all have trauma. It's an episode I just did. Two weeks ago, two two podcast episodes ago, what if trauma was a good thing? We all have shitty things that have happened to us. Maybe they're still happening to you. We all have those things. And I see you in that and I see you in the pain. What's important for us is to recognize that we have to light our darkness, that we have a responsibility to do something about it. We get to do something about this. You get to have a look at the dark parts of you, bring the light to those parts of you and heal them. It's going to be messy. You may have to become a goop of nothingness in order to create yourself. Don't get stuck in the cocoon, my loves. Understand that you're becoming the butterfly. Get to work. So the official pitfall number two is that your tribe may change. As you grow and as you expand, your frequency change, your vibe, right? Your vibe changes. Who you are changes. 
And not because you are becoming someone else, but because you are letting go of who you're not. Your conditioning and your programming, you're letting that go. So if you are used to hanging out with people who are used to being stuck in their own cocoon, when you start getting yourself out of that, they might not be too happy about it. Misery loves company. That's a saying. So people may want to drag you back into your cocoon. And you may have to change your tribe. There'll be people in your life who are not going to come with you in your next journey. Wherever you're going, they want to stay in their cocoon. Let them. And it may be painful to do that. But understand it's more painful to stay where you are with a tribe of people who are holding you back because they're holding themselves back and you're letting yourself hold them back, hold you back. It's far more painful to stay there because nothing ever changes. Will it be painful potentially to lose some friends or people that you love along the way? Yep. Will that pain last forever? No. But it will if you stay there. So understand that the second pitfall is about your tribe may change and that could equal pain. But as you become more and more authentically yourself, you now get to fly with the butterflies instead of staying stuck with the caterpillars in the cocoon. Yeah, you will actually attract more people to you that are like you. And that's a wonderful thing. The more you like yourself, the less it's going to bother you when other people don't. Right? So get to loving yourself. That's the point. It's the whole point. The third official one here, because I've given you a bonus here, we get to our light through our darkness. And most people misunderstand that. Like we've said with this caterpillar analogy, you don't get to go to your light without traversing the darkness. It's part of the deal. To the depth to which you are willing to go within yourself will be, will be to the heights that you are able to take yourself. It is balanced that way. The deeper that you go within yourself, the higher you can rise. Almost like a tree, right? If you have a tree, a big, beautiful, amazing tree that you see out into the world, that tree is likely to be as deep as it is tall. Its roots will go as deep because it needs to support the height. If you start shooting up, up here, but you don't have the roots to stabilize yourself, you're going to fall over. So we need to go deep. We need both. In order to rise high, we need to go low as well. We we are here as this seedling and we, we grow up and we grow down. Our roots become really, really deep so that our height becomes really, really high. These are the three pitfalls. You think it's not meant to get messy. Your tribe may change as you do it and you're going to have to go deep in order to go high. We get through out to our light through our darkness. Please understand that's just part of the deal. <laughs> through the challenge, the warrior is born. The caterpillar is the perfect example of that. Through the decimation of the caterpillar, the butterfly is born. Through the challenge, the warrior is born. You are actually creating yourself as we speak. You are here on this podcast and drawn to this for a reason. You are literally creating yourself as we speak. And only you can do it for yourself. You can take guides, you can read books, you can participate in podcasts. All of those things are important. They will help you along the journey, help you get unstuck in the places that you are stuck. Very, very important. But only you get to be the one who grows. The work itself is up to you. And a whole bunch of us don't really want to face that. But for those of you who do, you will feel the empowerment of this. It's powerful to understand that you get to do the thing, that you're in charge, that you get to be the one who's going to do it. Oh, now you can stop waiting for the world to do it and you get to do it for yourself. Hallelujah. So surround yourself with support. And I don't just mean your tribe, because sometimes that doesn't always work out, certainly in the short term. But this is your tribe, showing up to podcasts, showing up to courses, hiring a coach, reading books, you know, um, 
all of those things in multiple ways, surround yourself with as much support as you possibly can, even if it feels indirect, like conversations like this. If you do really want to understand what it's like to kind of love yourself and love your body fully, go check out my book, Perfectly Imperfect, this side. This side, for those of you watching uh, on YouTube, you can see that my book is Perfectly Imperfect, Your Complete Guide to Loving Yourself and Loving Your Body. You can find it on my website, www.moreconfidence.com.au, or if you just type my full name, Lenaria Gaia, L-U-N-A-R-I-A is my first name, Lenaria, surname is Gaia, G-A-I-A. If you search Lenaria Gaia, Perfectly Imperfect, you will find it. I narrated it. It's on Audible. It is in all good digital bookstores and you can buy hard copies from me as well, signed if you're curious. Understand that these pitfalls are just a part of the self-love evolution. Understand that if you experience them, it is totally normal. Yeah. And if you do want more love, if you do want your support, as I said, I suggest that you go check out my book. Maybe even join my mailing list a few times a week, sometimes once a week, a couple of times a week. I will send you through reminders, beautiful spaces, just to let you know that you're not alone on this journey. It's another avenue of support. So you can find that on my website as well, www.moreconfidence.com.au. And of course, you can follow me on the socials. You can find me anywhere, Lenaria Gaia on all most of the platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, threads even, even Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn as well as, of course, here on YouTube, if this is where you're listening. If this episode has been valuable for you and you have found any of these episodes valuable, go ahead and hit that subscribe button wherever you hit that subscribe button so that you can not only support yourself in this, but support this work and support the messages that I'm sending out there in the world. Every single time that you subscribe or like or comment, it helps this podcast reach an even bigger audience. And that is part of the mission. I love you and I hope that you love you too. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for listening to the More Confidence with Luna Guy podcast. I hope you feel more confident, more self-assured and ready to go tackle the world's problems and maybe kick ass in some of your dreams. If you haven't already, I would love for you to like and subscribe, follow and maybe leave a review so that other people know how to find this awesome podcast too. If you're wanting to sink your teeth into something even more juicy, my number one best-selling book, Perfectly Imperfect, Your Complete Guide to Loving Yourself and Loving Your Body, is now available on all good bookstore sites, both in print, digital, and I narrated it for Audible as well. If you think the coaching or maybe one of my courses is for you, why not head to www.moreconfidence.com.au and get in touch and see if we can talk. And of course, you can find me all across the social medias. That's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, which is where you're probably listening now, or maybe even here on the podcast platform. Sending you big love and wishing you a beautiful day.